How's it going, guys? Welcome back to Unorthodox Saving. So I have a little bit of a different video format for you guys. And what I'm talking about today is a long-term investment that I'm really excited about. It's from Round Hill Investments with a ticker symbol of SUBZ, S-U-B-Z. And to give you guys just a basic summary, this is all streaming services into one ETF. This is a huge sector and a huge growing industry overall. Um, if you watch Netflix and Disney+, Plus, if you use Spotify, these are all companies that are held by this ETF and Round Hill Investments is really good at actively managing their funds. So I'm going to get right into this. Now it's on the New York Stock Exchange and it has an expense ratio of 0.75, which is actually expensive for an ETF. But given that it's actively managed and that this industry is growing so fast, that's not a lot of money that you're going to realize. Um, it has 1.45 million outstanding shares, which is good because it just launched on February 10th. So this thing being brand new, there's a lot of room for this to grow and expand. And another thing to keep into mind, this has no options yet. So you can't trade options on this. So usually when an ETF opens up options trading, you'll see a spike in price. And that's just historically speaking. I'm not saying it's going to happen with this personally. Now, going onto the company website, they actually have a description in their mission statement of what the company and what the ETF is going to be about. So it says the Round Hill Streaming Services and Technology ETF is designed to offer investors exposure to the streaming industry. The fund consists of companies from across the globe who are actively involved in business or streaming. This classification includes companies that operate direct to consumer streaming services, including video, audio, and live streaming. Companies that create infrastructure or technology necessary to facilitate streaming. Sub-Z is an actively managed ETF and is designed to provide exposure to the streaming ecosystem. Sub-Z holdings are determined on the basis of exposure to the theme of streaming. So the one thing I like about this ETF is that it's actively managed because that means that there's somebody always paying attention to what's gonna happen and what's changing as streaming services go on. One thing you're gonna see into this is that Disney Plus and ESPN are going to have a merger of a streaming service. You're going to see cable companies and other things like that start to morph into packages. So now you can pay $34.99 a month to have Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon Prime into one package. So this is going to be really good for this ETF because a lot of these companies are held into this. And this is the passive approach to getting into this sector overall. Now, if you click onto the ETF holdings button onto this, I'm going to leave the link down below just so you guys can click on it. Um, it tells you what the ETF holds, the identifier number, the ETF weight, and then how many shares are actually owned into the ETF. So this is to go from the largest holdings all the way to the lowest. And with number one is Roku. Roku is an outstanding company. It's done very well this year. And same with Netflix. Uh, these two companies are widely known throughout the world. So there isn't much of an explanation needed for these two. The next is Spotify. A lot of people use Spotify for podcast and music. Um, I personally use this to watch the Joe Rogan experience. And one thing he actually talked about was talking about adding a comment section to Spotify for his podcast so that he can compete with YouTube. Now, Spotify does this, they won't do it for just his podcast, they'll do it for everything. So if they add a comment section, this is going to boost up their company and boost up the interaction with the interface. They also got into streaming for music. So Tencent Music Entertainment Group, JStream Incorporated, um, I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation on this, but Kyoshu Technologies, Cash and Other, which is actually not companies, it's what they have holding. And then Bright Cove Incorporated, uh, this is another pronunciation I'm going to mess up, but Billy Billy Incorporated, and then a bunch of other abbreviations. One company that I'm actually invested in separately outside of this ETF is actually FUBU TV, which is now endorsed by Money Mayweather. And this is basically taking live streaming of sports and sports betting and putting it into one platform. I'm very bullish on this company overall. Um, this is a, a definitely a biased statement because I've been holding this for a few months now, but I'm very happy they incorporated it. They also incorporated Disney because of Disney Plus, obviously, but overall, Disney's really good. It also pays a dividend. After Disney, the percentage of what they actually hold starts to go down. There's other popular companies like iHeartMedia, which is iHeartRadio, SiriusXM, uh, Peloton, Discovery Channel, AMC Networks, which uh, those of you who are into the Wall Street best things are now familiar with that. 
There's Comcast, Lionsgate. If you guys don't know what Lionsgate is, it's a very popular film production and it's made a lot of your childhood movies that you love. AT&T, Google, things like that, Amazon. And these are just basically keep the ETF stable. So you don't see a lot of fluctuations in the price in the long term, which I do like because they're trying to balance things out. But one thing again that I'm very happy for is if you go to the back holdings, they have Roku, which is a really fast growing company. It's been around for a while. People understand that this is a solid company by now. But one thing I want to talk about is how large of a position they have into FUBU, which is almost 4% of their holdings. And FUBU, I think, is going to do very well. I think they're going to combine with really big companies. So we're going to see how that goes overall. One thing that hasn't been announced is actually the dividend for this company or ETF. And I'm okay with this because a lot of technology companies don't even pay a dividend anyways because they take that extra money and reinvest it back into their own services. And these companies overall are meant to be of value. It's meant to grow in price over the long term, not pay out things. Now, there's a lot of companies in this ETF that do pay dividends, such as AT&T and Disney. So you may end up seeing a dividend for this ETF in a couple years or so. But one thing I would like this ETF to get into more is actually investing into video game companies. So ones that are familiar are Activision and Sony, other things like that, and even Twitch, which is a streaming service for video games and other things like that. As the younger generations grow up, they want to invest into things they're familiar with. And since this is actively managed, I'm not ruling this out at all. So if this video provided any value for you guys, please leave a thumbs up. Um, and let me know what you guys think down below. Um, I'm very bullish on this and I'm going to do updates as the months go by to see if anything's changed or any big switches in companies occurs. If you guys want to know what I'm doing in real time, you guys can go down and click the link to my free Discord. It's just what I do every day. Um, I talk about things I'm interested in, different companies I'm invested into. I also have a self-promotion tab. So if you're a newer YouTuber, you can promote your own videos in there and just talk about and do whatever you want. So thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you next time.